What's up, Wyoming percussionists? How you doing? Ed Brazil from the University of Wyoming, here with my main man, Mr. Chase Hull. Uh, Chase, you just witnessed him performing the um, 2018 WYOMEA xylophone A2. So uh, Chase is going to tell us a little bit about how he prepared to play this piece for us. Uh, I began learning the piece by taking the tempo extremely slow so I could get my bearings around the piece. And then I figured out the sticking for each individual section so I cross, my sticking would not cross over each other or hit our sticks together. So when Chase says he learned the piece slowly, he means he learned the piece at a glacial pace. Uh, there's a gentleman named Lee Howard Stevens who wrote this really important text on keyboard percussion called Method of Movement for Marimba. And in this text, he codified this idea um, that each note's upstroke um, can both, of course, move the mouth upwards and prepare the performer for the next note's change in pitch. Uh, he called this idea the piston stroke. And the basic tenets are if the performer changes pitch from one note to the next, then the upstroke should not only move up, but also move laterally, right or left, directly above the next pitch. And that way, all the performer has to do at the time to play that pitch is just drop the mallet head on the key itself. Um, so we went through each measure of the etude, Chase and I, and examine every note and whether that note needed um, the upstroke to move above a new pitch or stay in the same pitch. And so it's a long and sometimes tedious process, but it gives the performer the ability to consistently play the correct pitch at a variety of tempos. And it also, once you uh, start moving more quickly, will make your movements much smoother because they're going to be very efficient. So I'm going to actually play the first measure of the etude and go through this process um, showing you like the movement above the next pitch for each note. One of the other things we worked on with Chase is making sure that when the mounts were on adjacent pitches that he wasn't approaching those two adjacent pitches with an awkward angle, right, like this or that, that placed the heads of the mounts over parts of the bar that weren't going to sound as good as over the resonator, um, or that he wasn't crossing his mounts. The hardest uh, part for that piece was the arpeggio section close to the end, and it's hard because the, the spacing between the notes is different than the rest of the piece, so I took that one for a longer period of time at slow tempo. 